Yo, welcome to the first episode of the Dope Films Podcast, man. It's your dog, Smith and this bitch. Let me drop my shades because this light is very bright. Yeah. First off, man, like, comment, subscribe, push this shit, man. Help me get this shit out to these niggas, man, because this is the realest shit ever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, ghetto legendary motherfucking cameraman just teaching niggas how to be a ghetto cameraman. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's just what it is. You dig? Um. Uh, first off, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I would like to let y'all niggas know uh, who the fuck I am and why the fuck uh, I feel like I can talk to you niggas. Uh, <laughs> first off, you know what I mean. Um, I've been doing this shit down there 20 years and I ain't even old enough to even have done this shit 20 years that's how long I've been doing this shit I started learning at the age of 12 um hands on learning in the studio radio and television studio in Holland Park Michigan on what word is closed now rest in peace to WHPR studio you know what I'm saying they got a new studio now but the, the, the OG when that's across the street from Holland Park High School um I think they turned it into like a like a little shopping like a I got swap meet or some shit like that. I can't even remember, man. I ain't been over there so long, but, um, yeah. Um, and then, you know, a couple of years went past. Um, I had, um, started going to high school in ninth grade, bro. At my high school, they had a radio and television program. So I took that, um, ninth and 10th grade. Um, I got kicked out Northwestern high school. Well, I didn't get kicked out. Um, I finished 10th grade, and then I went back for 11th grade, and they told me that I couldn't come the fuck back because um, I was a class clown and shit. I never went to class and shit like that. So, you know, them niggas told me they weren't fucking with me no more because they was trying to, like, if you know anything about Detroit schools, it's school, uh, Martin Luther King, Cass, um, DSA. There's a lot of schools that you got to kind of, like, take a test to get into, and it's like they keep up, like, they keep their campus cl- cleaner than the other schools. You know, it's just like uh, like... You know, like, that's just, just a way to trying to make it a better school. Anyway, so they was trying to make Northwestern one of those schools. So they was trying to, like, um, get rid of all the um, fucked up students and shit. But this is in a fucked up neighborhood, bro. Like, it, they, they weren't going to be able to do it. it. Well, take that back. All the neighborhoods in Detroit is fucked. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Um, that being said, um, I went to... Um, Holland Park Career Academy for 11th grade. And then they had radio and television program there. The thing about this, right? They had radio and television the whole day. Like, you could take it, like, okay. It was like two sections of the day for some reason. And you could take, um, like, well, it was so weird. I don't remember. I can't even remember. I'm so I just smoked so much weed. It's been so long, but I just remember I used to be in that bitch all day. Um, I did two semesters. I finished one semester. Didn't finish the other semester because I got kicked out of there too. I was smoking weed with the rapper niggas, and I got down the hallway. Now a lot of legendary rappers used to either go to this school or um, used to hang out at this goddamn school. Uh, that's in Detroit, Mike. Mike. Uh, rest in peace, Hustle Boy from YBI, um, D Skrill. Um, y'all know I'm not as clean paper. I used to be up there a lot. Um, Calico used to be around. Yeah, just a lot of just a lot of uh, legendary niggas. Duke from Rock Bottom. Um, yeah, just a lot of a lot of the young niggas back in you know early 2000s. I was a young buck man. I was like sixteen, but you know the, the, the ages varied from from around from around. There. I was a young nigga man. I was so yeah, but I could spit, so they fucked with me. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't look at me like no different. Like I kept a bankroll. You know what I'm saying? I kept some switches, kept some weed for us to smoke. You know what I'm saying? They treated me like a grown ass man. Even though as a kid, I was always treated like a grown man. I started um, hanging out in the streets around like 12, 13 years old. Man, that shit, they, you know, the niggas embraced me. They never, they never, um, little dog me. They never, little bro me. They never tried to, you know, only, only niggas that tried to even try to, um, fuck with me in that sense is niggas like that was my own age. The big homies always fucked with me like that, you know what I'm saying? I grew up super fast. But anyway, um, 
I did that uh, radio and television. So, um, and then uh, that was like, um, oh, matter of fact, rewind a little bit. Um, in tenth grade, my after school program was a radio and television program. No, it was just a, actually it was just a film program. I ain't gonna say that. It was like a, it was just an after school film program. It wasn't really radio, just film. You know what I'm saying? And that, um, I had like the, the Monday and Thursday class, Tuesday, Thursday class, the Monday, Wednesday class, ended up shooting that little video for Big Shine and shit. And that shit was crazy because when I seen that shit, I was like, damn, like, like when, when Big Shine got on, they had played that shit on the news one time. And I was like, damn, that's crazy, bro. Cause I remember, I remember like we had like a little ceremony or whatever where they played like it was at like uh i want to say it was like at the amc on eight mile or some shit like that but anyway we had a little premiere and like all the projects that we did from the class shit was shown on the big screen in that bitch and uh yeah bro them niggas did that shit i was mad as fuck i went in that class i'm like damn <laughs> i would have been able to be a big shot when he was shit it was just cool though uh anyway fast forward back to um High school, man. After that, I ain't really, um, I ain't really fuck around too much. High school, I did go to job court, graduated. You know what I'm saying? And um, once I became an adult, bro, I was just in the street. You know what I'm saying? Um, I used to try to borrow my mama camera and do what I could. Um, but I was more so a rapper, though. The only reason why I was even fucking with the radio and television and trying to go to school and all that shit was just to meet some people to try to get in the door to um, meet some celebrities to try to get a record deal from rapping. You know what I'm saying? I had the whole wrong idea about this shit. But, I mean, I ain't gonna say I had the wrong idea about it, but, you know, just, that's just what in the path God chose for, nigga. You did. But, um, man, college came, you know what I'm saying? Went, went a little bit of college. Um, Went to Henry Ford, I think it was 2010, 2011 or some shit like that. Then I went to Specs Howard. Then I went to motherfucking, um, went to Oakland Community. You know what I'm saying? Went to a lot of school. I had a lot of education, bro. I know this shit like the back of my motherfucking hand. It's just, you know, um, when you're in the streets, bro, it's kind of hard, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then, like, I ain't, I wasn't a little, I wasn't one of them young niggas that could have just stayed home. Like, when I turned 18, you feel me? I had my own crib, on everything. I was on my own. Like, I had to figure that shit out. Like, adolescent mind, you know what I'm saying? Out here trying to fucking be grown. Like, really be grown and responsible at 18 years old, bro. It was, like, a shock to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I, I was still worried about getting out and trying to get some pussy every day. And I wasn't getting... No ass. I'm gonna let y'all niggas know <laughs> right now. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, it was very bad for me. I ain't gonna lie, nigga. I'm not even gonna attempt to cap with you niggas, bro. It was fucked up for me. But, uh, um, when I went to OCC, though, um, I ended up, um, being, you know, heavy on social media and shit. Uh, little Dave, I was, you know, sent the nigga on Instagram and shit. I was like, damn. The nigga had all type of uh, photographer, videographer and all that shit in his bio. But then I hit the nigga up and told him, man, come help me shoot some shit. He like, man, I ain't got no camera. I'm like, bro, you ain't got no camera. So I went and bought me a bigger camera than I had at the time. And, um, uh, you know, well, no, no, actually, no, sorry, sorry. I already had two cameras. I already had two cameras, but one camera was fucking weak as hell, though. You know what I'm saying? That bitch was <laughs> Canon power shot. And, um, and I had the, uh, Canon T4i. But anyway, um, I told the nigga, man, good luck, man. Listen, bro, you don't need no camera. Just come and, um, help a nigga out, man, with this shit. Shoot these models and, um, Help me shoot some music videos that I might have booked or whatever, whatever, some events and shit. And, uh, you know, I pay you a little money, man. I ain't really got no money to pay you, you know what I'm saying? But just help us out, bro. Help me grow the company and boom, you know what I'm saying? I, I might make you, you know what I'm saying? You might make you a boss with me if you, you know, really help me do this shit right. Um, Let's just say this. The bitch ain't had, uh, uh, hold up his end of the bargain to about a year ago, but there's no, neither here there. <laughs> uh, this was like, shit, like 2013, was it 
talk with you. It was late 2013. It was the end of 2013. I want to say. No. I'm sorry. This was top of 2014. Dave birth had birth, Dave just had had a birthday. It was in January. It was January 2014, Dave. Yeah. So, um, and tch, nigga, it's 2021 right now. So y'all do the math on that. Seven years, man. Me and my nigga been rocking, but um, so that's how Dave came in the picture. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, but it was a rocky road. Um, but one thing. Um, he did bring a lot to the table. I'm not going to lie. You feel me? Um, he brought a lot of, um, I want to say, a brought, he brought that young, younger energy that I needed. You know what I'm saying? Especially in Detroit at the time, I, he brought that younger energy I needed. And I ain't going to lie. You feel me? Like, he was able to link niggas with, like, D-Nail, Snapdog. You feel me? A lot of the motherfuckers that, in the city that, that ended up, you know, becoming something in, uh, you know, we was a part. Of, we we, had, we was um, humbly, humbly a part of help, helping a lot of niggas become successful. You feel me? Um, one day we got into it. You know what I'm saying about money. And you know what I'm saying he was feeling like he needed more money, and I was like, bro, you don't know how to really shoot yet. You don't know how to uh, fucking edit or whatever. And he, so the bitch ass nigga teach me. Shit, the fuck you mean? Nigga? I'm grown ass man. Nigga. You act like I don't know how to learn, nigga. So I was like, all right, shit, let's get it. You feel me? So that's when, you know, I took him to boot camp, nigga. Put him in that boot camp, man. Put that camera in his hand and start letting that nigga do shit on his own, nigga. And 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 and, and I taught him where to learn, how to learn, how I learned. You know what I'm saying? Taught him everything I knew. Um, and then shit, nigga, put that camera in his hand and made his ass go to, uh, turned him to a crash test dummy. And, and, and was a, and was a, a very hard critic about his work when it, when it was done, you know what I'm saying? And I still, I still criticize the fuck out of him. I still, he still ain't hundred percent listening to all my, um, my criticism and advice that I give him, but, um, it's slowly for slowly learning, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'd say he got like a two, three year lag. I give him some, um, <laughs> Advice that bitch don't put it to use to at least two or three years later, but you know whatever. Uh, what's next, man? Shit, it's my first episode, y'all. Don't get on my ass. You feel me? <laughs> don't get on my ass. But I knew I had to give y'all a backstory right quick. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, transitioning. You know what I'm saying? Um, fast forward to, uh, let's see, I say like 2015, that's when the, um, YouTube really started hitting, working with like Chino, um, who else, uh, Stunt Hard and shit like that, um, and then I used to always be at the studio a lot, like I didn't, I, I lived in the studio, I'm not gonna lie, like 20, end of 2015, early 2016 I actually like lived out the studio almost and um yeah man I nigga like met everybody then everybody in the fucking city you come to the studio you feel me so I met everybody you know what I'm saying we, we, we if if one way or another you know what I'm saying made some type of um link up happen um yeah I did a lot of work for a lot of people you know what I'm saying um Shout out to Rokane, shout out to Ch uh, Smoke Camp Chino, shout out to Stun Hart, shout out to uh, Babyface Ready, who kept fell through a couple times to that bitch. Shout out my nigga Mish. Um, that's another good um, customer that, that, that um, kept, you know. Um, uh, who else, man? Um, Fool Boy Marley. Um, Crystal the Dow, uh, uh, Jackpot. Um, even though I've been to Jackpot, I was kind of really reason. Jackpot used to come up there a lot, but um, my rest in peace, my nigga Boone. My baby Boone, uh, met Boone at the studio. Rest in peace, my nigga, man. Um, uh, V's, V's used to always be at the studio with Stun Hart. He, he wasn't even rapping then, I don't think, bro. The nigga should just be quiet. He's quiet as fuck, just chilling, bro. That nigga, that's crazy that the nigga done blew up like that. Um, yeah, man, that's a lot of motherfuckers, bro. Um, hope I ain't forget nobody. Um, 
I mean, of course, my Callaway niggas, you know what I'm saying? Back then, they was fucking with Real Hustle. Shout out uh, all the artists that still fuck with Real Hustle, man. But my Callaway niggas, they on their own. They on their own shit now, you know what I'm saying? Fucking with T.I. and Atlanta, you feel me? So, um, from there, man, we went to, uh, fucked around and, um, we had got a crib on Seven Mile, you feel me? That shit became the motherfucking hub, man. Everybody used to be through that motherfucker, man. I ain't even, phew. The whole city used to be at the crib, bro. Everybody, man. I used to see niggas. I used to be running into niggas in L.A. They act like they ain't know who the fuck I was. I just be like, bro, you used to be. I mean, you nigga used to come to my house, nigga. Like, <laughs> niggas don't even know. Like, they don't even, a lot of niggas don't even because they like come up with another motherfucker. They'd be just chilling, smoking some weed. They don't even know they at. They don't know who house this is or nothing. They just, they just know like just the camera man, like Dave house, Dave here. They don't know. They just here. You feel me? And I just, I, I don't know. Uh, a lot of motherfuckers. But we used to we man that that house bro, every, bro bitches bro we used to have a busload of bitches in that bitch at all times bro at all times bro I'm talking about man I'm talking about it's probably we smoke seeped into the, like you could sniff a piece of wood in that house I guarantee you it smelled like weed bro we was in that bitch tripping nigga I had that bitch video cameraman trapped out nigga that was the cameraman trap nigga rapper rapper trap nigga that bitch was the hood man. But anyway, um, I skipped that out, out the hood. Um, went to LA with my Caldwell niggas, man, and was out there ever since. That was uh November 2017, 2017 to 20, 20, ah, 2017 to 2021. A few months ago, I moved. I moved to uh, Arizona and shit. I've been in Arizona ever since. Um, Dave still in the D. You know what I'm saying? He gonna get this little podcast set up so we can uh zoom you know what i'm saying do this shit via zoom and shit like that um shit uh uh i'm definitely gonna move from my, my goddamn bedroom with this shit i'm definitely gonna um it's an empty room my little studio room is right literally across the hall i'm working on building that up right now so y'all niggas be able to see like a more professional setting up setup you know what i'm saying even though the room is a vibe you dig but you know um, Arizona, Arizona, Arizona. Um, uh, I would like I, I fucked the um the highest amount of bitches in the lowest amount of time I've and all my life since I've been in Arizona. Um, I think it's almost like twenty five or some shit like that. And I've been here. It's October. I've been here since May. I fucked to like twenty five bitches since May. Twenty. I think it's like twenty two or twenty three to be exact right now. But I don't even know. Um. Yeah, and it's and it's when I tell you there's a couple more on the floor that that on dick so bad I ain't even I'm, I'm about to hit thirty I'm about to hit thirty probably let me see this October November December I probably hit forty before the year's over probably you know, I'm not gonna say I'm fucking another twenty five bitches that fast but another fifteen in the next November December. Uh, I'll probably be 30 I'll probably fuck another 10 bitches by then <laughs> But it's hard See when you're in the city You still See it's, it's You fight them Quicker when you fresh Because then Nobody knows you You know what I'm saying So like You can knock so many Off the goddamn list How many more Is there left to even get fucked You know what I'm saying Like so that's That's why you, you, After a while Your numbers start to slip Especially in the, uh, I'm in a small town I ain't Couple of them was from Phoenix, but I do need to just start uh, incorporating some Phoenix numbers up in there. I could take some Phoenix tricks a couple of times or something like that, man. Because I ain't finna wear myself out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can't do that. Can't do that. But um, it is some dope models in there. I ain't gonna lie. Um, uh, it's a lot of porn girls out here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yes, I don't know if y'all know. Keep been keeping in touch with a nigga or what I be on, but you know, I just launched to motherfucking Angels Online, angelsonline.com, you know what I'm saying? It's my online magazine. It's, a, it's, a, it's an online nudie mag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Soft porn site, whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm saying? Got the photo shoots, um, the Vixen video, twerk videos that I shoot of the girls is on there, behind the scenes, all the shoots and shit like that. Um, I got the, I got the fucking 
You said not touching these damn stand. Um, yeah. Then I got my um, my t-shirt line that I just um, dropped. Dreamrealitybrand.com. Go check that out. Fuck with them DR logo shirts. Them bitches go hard. Um, fuck with the uh, school of um, uh, um, um, hard knock. I mean, I'm sorry. That's where I got the idea from. Sidewalk high. <laughs> uh, school of hard knock was the late, you know, it was the 90s or the 2000s. I was like, bro, I'm gonna come out with another little thing like that. Cause, um, school of hard knock was hard as fuck. And then like, that's like the school of hard knock is like, like, uh, the, the university, the hip hop, like, uh, uh, make believe university. And so I wanted to come up with sidewalk high. It's like the, the high school version of that. Um, keep on a look. I got two more clothing lines that I'm gonna drop. Um, but I want to, um, I want to blow this dream reality thing up first, you know what I'm saying? So just so I can get a successful clothing venture behind my name. And then, um, yeah, we're going to go um, to the next one. It's a streetwear. It's going to be a fashion, streetwear fashion brand, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Street fashion, streetwear brand. Um, and then we're going to then we're gonna go into the um, the hot fashion, um, you know, real fashion house. I got some dog, uh, uh, excuse me. I got some dog ass names. Ah, uh, ADD speech impediment shit. I got some dog ass names. Um for those lines too I think and that's some dope ass ideas that I'm gonna do for the for the um initial collections and shit so hope y'all like that shit when that shit come out man I know y'all gonna like it bro that shit gonna be hard as fuck um easy easy million dollar companies bro easy hundred million fifty hundred million dollar companies bro if if, if not you know <laughs> but um you know, I just want to do it the right way. I ain't finna just start putting shit out, and I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have no connections to get to the, you know, the to get the the, the what I want to say, man, the, the 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 lowest um wholesale prices and shit like that on on materials, and you know, I want to be able to actually open up a factory and really stitch my shit and stuff like that. So, you know, man, that shit gonna be a long, long, long journey. You know what I'm saying? But I, I know, man, I'll be able to get the, at least the streetwear. See, the, street, the streetwear fashion brand is not going to take as much as the actual, you know, being a, being a fashion house, like being like a like a, like a a Louis Vuitton and Gucci, you feel me? It's very, it's way easier to be a, um, to be a off-white, to be a, to be a Supreme, to be a, to be a, um, Gallery Depot, to be one of those kind of brands. It's very, it's way easier. Um, it's still very difficult, but it's, it's, it's way easier. Um, and, and I feel like, um, um, closing your fucking mouth and not letting people know, um, what you're trying to do on that, you're contradicting yourself, but I'm just letting y'all know that I got, you know, these goals. I'm not, I'm not telling y'all the specific, I'm not telling y'all the names of my company. I'm not telling y'all exactly what the route I'm about to take. And, you know, I'm not, I'm just letting y'all know that these, are, you know, this, this is what's scheduled in my, in my, um, in my goals. Like these are my, my, my next goals. And that was, that, that was just fashion because I was speaking on my um, t-shirt brand, you know what I'm saying? So I was just elaborating on the fashion shit. Um, this is I elaborated on that, and I elaborated on what I was with with the other industry I'm fucking with with the porn shit and whatever the girls. Um, I do have um an idea for an actual like fully blown um like a fetish porn site. I got an idea for that. That's a super dog idea. You know what I'm saying? See, and my thing is void fillers. You know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to ideas, you gotta fill a void. You know what I mean? And um. I would I would say with the clothing I'm not too much filling the void. I mean, one of them, the the actual fashion house, they got like a like a significant meaning behind it, and and it, and it goes hand in hand with what um what my brand stands for. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I love that one. But uh, the streetwear, the street fashion is just that, bro. It's just it's just gonna be some um, streetwear shit, some hard ass streetwear shit. You know what I'm saying? That niggas gonna throw on and be like, damn, this shit hard as fuck, like. Some hard designs, bro, with with a with a sweet ass name that's gonna just 
ring bells when you hear that shit and when you see it you just gonna be like oh that shit hard that the whole idea of it is hard i think i mean i guess this is still a void filler because nobody um came with this idea that with it it is a hard ass idea behind it so i guess it, in that sense in fashion it's a void filler i guess you know it's like everybody take these little um like how sports became a thing you know like uh you know, motherfuckers doing the bulletproof vest, so that kind of that like artillery type of shit became a thing. Um, you know, uh, back in back late nineties, early two thousands, when when uh, construction clothes became a thing. You know what I'm saying? That that, that kind of shit. So it's a, it, in that sense, um, the type of clothing that I'm bringing into the fashion, like to into fashion, um, or into streetwear. I want to say the fashion I'm bringing into streetwear has never been brought into streetwear before. So, um, I think that shit going to be dope as fuck. Um, yeah, and then, um, as far as, um, film, um, I'm going to be, um, working on some scripts. I got these uh, movie ideas. The reason why I'm, um, moving so slow with movies is because that's my main goal so i want to kind of like root all the, the extracurriculum shit and like have those world oil machines so i can put people in place to help those so once that all is running and that's smooth and i can just capitalize on that i can finally sit and i can just and you know what i mean while wow, i got all this income coming in from all these different ventures i could be using that to um as resources to um travel around and meet these producers and meet um, you know, cinematographers and directors and all this kind of shit that I need to, um, cause bro, when you, if, if, if I was to just, um, come up with a script and sell it to, um, house and just tell them like, bro, you can't I, you know, sell it unless you let me direct it. Then that's one thing. But like, I, I really want to do every single thing independent, bro, from top to bottom, you know what I'm saying, vertically integrated, integrated, you know what I'm saying, shout out to my nigga Nip, you feel me, everything gotta be mine, bro, I can't, I can't, I can't go, you know what I'm saying, so I don't wanna do it at all if I can't do it like that, you know what I'm saying, um, I feel like I, um, I could compromise, um, the box office, you know what I'm saying, for, 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 for my shit to be my shit, you know what I'm saying, and I feel like, bro, we, we control, we control the, you know, the culture control of what's going on, so, like, I feel like, man, if, if, if we come up with our own, uh, platforms and shit like that, bro, we, we, we'll be better off, because, um, I, I really, I really, I really don't want to sell out to these people, you know what I'm saying, um, that I'm big on that, you know what I'm saying, so, um, if, if it takes till I'm 50, 60 years old to put a, to, 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 to put a, um, box office match movie out, then so be it, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I, I can't go, bro. I can't do it. Um, will I, will I help people come out? I'll, 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 I can help people come up with ideas and that, that could be ways that I could, you know, be part of big films like I'll, I'll help write or help come up with ideas. Like I'll sell ideas and shit like that. But shit that I want to be my projects. Like when I come up with a film and I want it to be produced, written, directed by Smith, I gotta own everything. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta own everything. I'm sorry. Um, with that being said, though, um, I do wanna and. And then, like, another thing, too, um, when I do them, I want to be able to bring in and work with whoever the fuck I want to work with. I don't want no kind of, um, I don't want no, no, what they want to call it, no black ball, no, no industry, no, nobody telling me what the fuck I can and can't do, you know what I'm saying? Um, because, you know, I want to, I want to big up the uh, people in the D, man, like, I want to, I really want to take Detroit and make Detroit a new, the new Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Uh, cause I mean, cause if I don't, who ain't, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm the only nigga that's got these kind of goals out the city, you know what I'm saying? With filming, you know, just being the mogul in general. Um, I, you know, I haven't met nobody or I haven't, um, 
heard anybody on interviews talk about these kind of goals, you know what I'm saying? So, um, only person that's kind of close to even being that kind of mogul out of the city right now is my nigga Vezo, you know what I'm saying? Um, got the pleasure to meet this nigga on a couple of occasions, man. Vezo is a real solid dude, bro. Like, um, bro, let me just give y'all a quick story about Vez, bro. We was in the VIP one time, bro. And like, I'm just getting a little B-roll of what's going on and shit, right? So I see him open a bottle up, crack the bottle. He pour a drink, right? I'm trying to get B-roll of him cracking a bottle and pouring him a drink, right? And as I'm trying to tilt and get like that lower little angle of him pouring that bitch, he done already uh, and extended that bitch and was trying to pass me the very first shot. And like, I'm sitting there with the camera like this. And he got that cut right in my motherfucking camera. Like, I'm like, oh, I ain't even pay. I'm so into the camera. I wasn't even paying the fucking attention. <laughs> they were trying to hand me a motherfucking drink, dog. I was like, hell no. Nah. So, and the reason why I say that is to say, bro, who the fuck about to, about to play? What rapper is about to pull up for the cameraman? You know what I'm saying? Like, who who gives a fuck about you, nigga? You here to work, nigga. Do your fucking work. Like, for, for a nigga to even be even, like, giving a fuck. That the cameraman gets a drink, like, you know what I'm saying? And lesson known, like, the very first one you pour, like, you know what I'm saying? And the crazy part is, I wasn't even his cameraman. He had Lando there as his cameraman. My nigga, I was there for my nigga Rucci that he had brought out to open for him, which was crazy. Um, Shout out to my nigga Rucci, man. Um, The Foreigner is his name, man. Shout out to The Foreigner, man. Um. I don't know if he still fuck up, fuck around over there at Howard City, but um, that's my nigga, man. Um, he did a lot for me too early on. Um, well, we did a lot for each other. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, man, man, Vez, Vez is a real one, though, man. Vez is definitely a real one, bro. I'm, I'm so happy for the success that nigga getting right now, man. That nigga, um, he just dropped a little video too, bro, and trying to get his little act on and shit like that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Um, crazy, because Bez done been in like two, three movies, too. You know what I'm saying? He got his own movie. Then he did, uh, what was that, 211 he was in? He actually acted pretty good in 211. That, that had a pretty good director. And that, that, that nigga, he, I, I, I would let that nigga direct a movie for me, man. I can't remember. I know um, Detroit Cinema's brother. Um, can't, I can't remember Kenny's brother's name. Um man that's fucked up i can't think of that nigga name man shout out to um detroit cinema though man and uh for sure mag and them niggas man fuck joseph mcfashion though but you know anybody that work for joseph man you know what I mean? you know what i'm saying y'all putting work in y'all getting getting to y'all bag you know what i'm saying I'm, um I, I know he pay niggas good and shit like that so well i don't know because <laughs> leave it to dz he don't pay shit but anyway um yeah if anybody want to know why I got problems with Joe, I'm just a quick little sidebar, man. He just, back when he first was starting off, man, he just wasn't solid. He did a lot of snake shit to the niggas that I was, that, that's my fam, you know what I'm saying? So, that niggas never kind of came back from, actually. So, you know. Um, yeah, man, fuck that nigga. But, uh, um, but fuck with his company, fuck with what he do. I just, as him as a person, bro, I just can't, I can't, I can't, bro. Unless the nigga, you know, if he care enough to even try to make those situations better, but he had chances and he didn't, so you know what I'm saying. Um, back to my nigga Vez, though. You know what I'm saying, the nigga Vez, bro, your real one. Um, the song with uh Future, I don't like too much, but I do fuck with uh Up the Skull with Dirt. Um, Triple Rez on his album, just that song's fire. This song. That um, that Vez put Trippy Red on that sh- that shit. I like it. Um, uh, what else? What else? It was something else about Vez I wanted to mention. Oh, 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 the uh, Vlad and Big Facts interview. Yeah. Um, that shit is big, bro. My nigga, big. Bro. That, that that he getting big, bro. If you you doing interviews like that, you went you went there, bro. And uh. Breakfast Club too. Breakfast Club, no jumper. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, on the major major platforms for interviews and shit like that. So, 
he doing a good deed, you know what I'm saying, for the city. He really putting on, he, he makes sure he mention every nigga. You know what I'm saying? The nigga, he, the, 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 solid, solid, bro. Solid. Great representation for the city, bro. Great representation. Um, speaking of um, interviews, <laughs> well, fuck a podcast and shit, this nigga Kodak Black. It was so fresh and fit yesterday. You feel me? It was fresh birthday and shit. These niggas was hanging out with Kodak. Um, Cause academics came down, I guess, to Florida to interview Kodak for his podcast. And you know, them niggas um, be lending that nigga to the uh, studio when he needed to work. So uh, I guess them niggas just said, fuck it, man. And them niggas went and uh, uh, went live right quick with Kodak and the little monkey and uh, a few of the little baddies and shit. And uh, yeah, that shit was funny as hell. Man, the niggas turned up, man. Kodak, another real one, man. That's a that's a that's a that's a real solid young nigga, man. Real solid young nigga, man. Shout out to Kodak, man. Shout out to Kodak, man. Shout out to Broadway, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, transitioning. You know what I'm saying? Um, comedy corner. This is the comedy corner section right here. And uh, I just want to highlight um, my niggas over at uh, All Def. You know what I'm saying? Um, my nigga CP, comedian CP, Chris Powell. That's one of my good friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, ever since I seen him on there, man, I just knew like it was going to be something special because... First of all, it ain't going to be, you know, he ain't not going to fuck with nothing that's not um, authentic and, and, and you know, um, funny. Like, if it's, it's but shit, shit, if niggas around you ain't funny, he ain't fucking with you. So, shit, all right, that's how I knew once I seen him on there. Oh, that was going to be something special. Um, shout out to the nigga Patrick um, for, for creating um, dad jokes and roast me. Um, I fuck with dad jokes, but right now I want to talk about roast me, man. Uh, this is this is one of the most innovative creative um shows i think um that ever hit the internet to, to just be 100 um and i know it's just simple like our niggas is roasting but the, i mean it's, it's still a good format like it's it, the format of the show keeps it funny you know what i'm saying um it having a host in it in, in the detention and all of that shit man that shit is a very 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 funny fucking show bro shout out to all dev digital um shout out to patrick for creating the show shout out to my nigga cp um yeah bro um that's one of a kind bro that's that shit is like um it almost puts you in like it gives you gives you that feel of like you watching like an a living color from back in the day, like, I remember getting those same kind of vibes, like, when I watch Art Death, that's what I kind of get, like, even though it's not all sketches, you know what I'm saying, the niggas got, like, um, the shows are very put together, and they're not, like, scripted acting comedy, it's just, um, all improv, but, um, type of shit, set up, set up shows, you know, for people to do improv, um, Man, yeah, man. All deaf. Um, roast me is that's that shit is that shit that's a platinum platinum show, bro. I love the fuck out that shit. I would love to come on as a guest and try to roast some niggas. Um, yeah, bro. Shout out my nigga CP one more time, bro, because that nigga's a real one. Um, <laughs> I can't mention all deaf. You know what I'm saying? Without mentioning that nigga, I really can't mention comedy at all without mentioning that nigga because that's, um, you know the only he's the highest of. Um, uh, him and Foolish, you know, are the, the biggest comedians that I know that's personally. Um, shout out my nigga Jack Pot the Juice, though. You know what I'm saying? Shout out um, my nigga M.A.H. Quant. Um, I know a few comedians, bro. I don't want to leave nobody out, but though, shout out all my comedian niggas, bro. Y'all niggas are funny as hell. You know what I'm saying? Um, <sighs> gotta talk about these movies, man. I gotta talk about a movie. Gotta talk about a fucking movie, bro. This movie right here, I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was. Listen, there was no trailers to watch or nothing. I don't know if it was. I didn't go check. I should have checked to see if there was some trailers. But I didn't watch a trailer on it. 
don't know what's going off. The creator's word. <laughs> Saying this is the best biopic ever. Best biopic ever. Bossy. I love you to death. But I swear to God, I want to swing on you when I see you. I know I'm going to get murdered to death if I try that. So it's going to um, keep being a thought in my head. But God damn it, Boosie. You've been in the industry for too long, bro. And I know you're an independent nigga like me. Same shit. Same shit. He He wanted to have his film. You know what I'm saying? But I can tell you right now, Boosie. It's... African American filmmakers right now that could have produced this movie for you, brother. And it would have looked like a fucking movie. It's some casting directors that's African American. Boosie. Even listen, bro. Listen. You ain't dang gotta be African American. If you paying is yours. If you're the one paying them, then the profit is yours. So I don't want to hear none of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh you could you could have paid some people to um you could have paid some people to fucking shoot that movie better, Boosie. You could have paid some people to cast the the film better. You know what I'm saying? Like the acting suck, the filming suck, the lighting suck, audio sucks, movie sucks. Um sorry Boosie, I know that movie's about your life. Um, but the the movie fucking sucks. Um I Man, listen, bro. We got to do better as black people when it comes to quality in this industry. Shout out 50 Cent. Um, shout out uh, the big dog, um, Tyler Perry. You know what I'm saying? Master P. Come on, bro. Boosie. Come on, bro. Like, this shit's sad, bro. This shit is sad. My nigga Blast, shout out to Blast from LA, shout out his little um, musical, his little mini little movie uh, album where he uh, shot a video for every song on the album and it, um, it be, or almost every song on the album. But every, but every video he did, was it was a story to it. So if you watch it all the way through, it's like a little mini musical movie. And um, when I say the quality is top notch, like I don't know who filmed it, um, I need to look them up, actually, because um, they, they are credited everywhere. I need to go and look that up so I can bring y'all back some more information. But, um, yeah, um, my nigga, like, it's, it's, it's getting to that point where technology is so fucking advanced, you have no excuse to why your um, content is not quality. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing a fucking podcast. It's my very first podcast um, out of my bedroom. And my shit look professional. I have a professional camera, professional everything. Like, it's, it's, it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? This light right here is professional. 60 bucks. My camera, old as fuck. But it's a professional camera. Um, my mic, it came... With the pop filter came with the desk stand, brother. 60 bucks, bro. There's no excuse, bro. There's no excuse, my nigga. You Boosie could have shot that movie for under a million dollars and it could have it would have looked like any other movie. Like, you know what I'm saying? You could have paid uh struggling actors out here busting their ass, Boosie. Okay. That you could pay little to no money to be in your movie. That a kill to be in your movie, bro. You can pay these motherfuckers little to no money to act in your movie. Like, it's all about resourcing, bro. Like, getting out there, busting your ass, taking no for an answer. Not taking no for an answer. Um, and, and refusing to, 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 um, what's the word, bro? Refusing to to um um damn I can't think of the fucking word, bro. But not uh give away your like give up the quality of it. You know what I mean? Like 
um, you, 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 you ain't, you ain't just cause we from the hood, we don't got to make hood movies. That's what I'm saying. Let's just, let's just put it out there like that. Like if you, you can, you can go out and figure it out. You know what I'm saying? You can go rent some Panavisions. You can go rent some RA cameras, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can go hire a real cinematographer, African-American cinematographer, bro. You can just Google it, bro. I'm almost certain you can Google that, bro. And, and some niggas a couple of, bro. Like, black cinema. This connection a little slow here. Five black cinematographers you should know. <laughs> Category African American cinematographers. Wikipedia got a whole list of them for you. 27 best cinematographers of 2021. Because remember, if you're paying the person to work, you still own the work. Just because you have a white cinematographer does not mean a white person now owns your movie or someone else owns your movie. If you pay him, you own your fucking content. Stop being racist. White people can work for you, bro. Just, um, uh, but if, if you must keep it all black, there's. Look, man. With that being said, bro, I'm going to wrap this shit up, man. Like, comment, subscribe, bro. That was episode one already, bro, in the books, nigga. Fuck you niggas talking about. Look, hey, look. Episode one, I ain't finna do no teaching today. None of that. Just wanted to run my mouth. Let you niggas know we in the game. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mad as hell, I had to do this podcast all by myself. I wish I would have some niggas to talk shit. That uh, knew a couple of these uh, topics that could have talked on it with me, but it's all good though. You niggas get one opinion today, nigga. <laughs> it's all good, man. I'm gonna be doing these bitches every few days. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if, whenever I feel like doing it because I'm ADHD. So whenever I feel like mm, it's podcast day, it'll be podcast day, and I'm gonna drop them whenever the, I'm gonna drop them on on certain days. But I'm gonna record them whenever the fuck I feel like it. So that means I'm gonna stockpile a few of these bitches before I get to dropping them, so I can like have a good rotation of dropping them. Um, if you listen to this, that means, that means a few episodes are recorded and this one is out. 